I was in Berlin after the war. I was in Korea. I was in Cyprus. If you had seen, you would have realized that what we need is to take a knife to the body of our whole sick society and amputate the rotten parts. Major James Fawkes stands charged with stealing trust funds in his capacity as bursar to a school for epileptic children. The jury have heard Sir Richard Cresswell state that Fawkes was instructed to invest £15,000 of trust money in ICI shares. Henry Ince, a stockbroker, has testified that the accused put only 1,500 of this into ICI. The rest was invested under his own name in some high-risk mining shares, which are now worthless. The cheque for the investment came from Lady Virginia Cresswell, mother of an epileptic boy. It is alleged that Fawkes deceived her into signing it for £20,000 instead of fifteen. But in the witness box, she unexpectedly retracted this story. The defence case is that Fawkes acted under the guidance of Sir Richard Cresswell and is now being made the scapegoat. I would like now to return to your work at the school. Frankly, Major, I find it hard to understand why, feeling yourself to be the victim of injustice at the hands of the Knowles Trust, you continue to work there. You may find it hard. I don't. My family needed the money. And I needed the strength that I was given by Lady Cresswell's friendship. Yes, we've gathered that. You needn't worry, anyway. I've been dismissed now. I'm very sorry to hear it. Now, as to this unofficial present of £5,000, which you say Lady Cresswell gave you right out of the blue... You know damn well that that was for my daughter, and just the interest on it at that. And you know perfectly well that she could never have done such a thing. For what reason? Because both of you were well aware that the other trustees could never have approved a gift of that nature. Yes, I asked her about that, and she pointed out to me that the trust deed did allow it. <laughs> Nevertheless... Let me, let me finish, please. The terms of reference say that money may be used for the benefit of severely epileptic children and other allied charitable causes at the discretion of the trustees. I believe I've got it correctly. I hardly think your daughter qualifies as a charitable cause under those terms. No, she's just a bloody cripple, isn't she? I'm sorry, I, I didn't mean to offend you. I'll take your word for it. Now, if this extra £5,000 was genuinely intended as an investment for the benefit of your daughter, why did you never approach any member of the board for their approval? I left that to Lady Cresswell. She That's has a way with people. That's very convenient. It doesn't begin to stand up. Despite her noble attempt to protect you in court, the plain, unvarnished truth is that you lied to her. It's not. You told her to make out the cheque for £5,000 extra because you knew that she was unaware of the board's decision. I told her to make it out for £15,000. She said so herself. Let's go on. If this extra £5,000 was a legitimate investment, why did, you, why did you never invest it under the Trust's name? Because I had no wish to bring the Trust into disrepute because the, the whole Metallia scheme was a dirty investment. Do you mean speculative? I mean, the whole thing was a total disaster, that's all. I should have put the money into ICI. Did you tell Lady Cresswell what you had done with it? No, I didn't. Why not? She never asked. She never asked? Well, Virginia loathes the money side of things. Ah, so there you are, with a total of £18,500 invested in these mining shares, which are now falling fast. At that stage, you received a letter from the stockbroker concerned, uh, warning you that the collapse was imminent. Did you then say anything to Lady Cresswell? It wasn't her worry. Oh, we've heard a great deal about the intimacy that existed between you. Surely, if you were innocent, you would have confided in her. There was another factor. There was supposed to be a seller's market just around the corner. At least Cresswell thought there was, and I trusted his instinct. Whatever the reasons may be, it is a truly staggering list of omissions. We've heard a great web of events to your story. Let's now see if it is possible to summarise them briefly for the benefit of the jury. Please correct me if I make a mistake. I will. Firstly, this so-called gift of £5,000 which you invested in Metallia under your name... You never at any point said anything about it to Lady Cresswell? No. Nor to her husband? No. Nor to any of the other trustees? No. And then the rest of the money, 13,500 
of which was also invested in Metallia under your name, you never at any stage informed Lady Cresswell what had been done with it? I told you. Just uh, answer the question. No, I didn't. Nor any of the other trustees? No. Well, you seem to have omitted a remarkable amount of information. God is aware of the reason for that, even if you're not. Oh, what reason? Something they taught us in the army. Loyalty, if you can understand that concept. Loyalty to whom? Towards my employer, Sir Richard Cresswell. He asked me to be discreet about Natalia. I gave him my word. Really? And was it loyalty to your employer that led you with a sick wife of your own? to conduct an affair with his wife behind his back? My lord, I object to that. None of the witnesses has suggested any impropriety in my client's relations with Lady Cresswell. I think your lordship will agree one doesn't only measure loyalty sexually. Nevertheless, you intended it in those terms. I think you should withdraw the remark. As your lordship pleases. I have then no further questions. May, Mayor, you may return to the dock. Major Fox. Thank you, Mayor. I call Mrs. Violet Fawkes. Violet Fawkes, please. You are Mrs. Violet Fawkes of 24 Hillfield Crescent, Fulchester? Yes. You are the defendant's wife? Yes. Your daughter, Eloise, isn't a normal child, is she? No. In what way is she abnormal? She has what they call spina bifida. Do you look after her yourself? Yes. Completely? No, there is also a home help. Will you tell the court why this is necessary? I... You suffer from a heart condition. Yes, yes. Does this affect you very much? Well, I can't do a lot of the things I used to do. Does your, does your daughter receive regular treatment? No, she never has. Why not? It's not easy to get unless you're well off. Have you and your husband at any time recently made plans to get special attention for her? Yes. Will you tell the court about that, please? Eighteen months ago, we heard about a clinic in Gothenburg in Sweden where they take spina bifida cases up to the age of 16. Uh, they do research as well. Uh, we wrote to them about Eloise. With what result? Oh, the competition was just too much. Uh, well, for a sister's place, as that is, uh, it would have been different if we could have paid. Did that situation change? Yes. One day, my husband said that he'd managed to find the money, a, a long-term loan he was hoping a friend would give him. Can you remember when your husband first mentioned the possibility of this loan? Yes, it was before the board ever decided to invest any money. How long before? It would be uh, in early in 1973, uh, well, at least a month before. So your husband had already planned to send Eloise to Sweden a whole month before he became aware that the board would entrust him with the sum of £15,000? Yes. Do you believe him capable of putting money that didn't belong to him into unauthorised shares for his own personal profit? Why shouldn't he be capable of it? I beg your pardon? Well, there's nothing strange about that. Uh, I mean, he was very well, worried he was going to... Are you to trying to tell us... The witness finish, Mr Harvester. Sorry, my lord. Go on, Mrs. Fox. It was going to cost £1,800 to sell, send Eloise to the Fredrickson Institute. But as a matter of fact, he couldn't have done what people said. How do you know? My husband is a very religious man. Yes, in what way? He believes that God's will is being worked out on earth, that we see it every day. Do you recall the evening... Prior to the day on which your husband was arrested? Yes. Do you recall anything in particular that occurred that evening? Yes. He, he came home later than usual. He, he said he'd been to see Sir Richard Creswell at his home. What was his mood? Oh, he seemed rather worried about something. He tried not to let me see it, but uh, I could tell. Now, did he seem at all frightened to you? Oh, no, no. Did anything else happen? Yes. Uh, sometime in the early hours of the morning, he made a phone call. Do you know to whom? Yes, I was still awake, and when he came back to bed, I asked. 
He said he'd been speaking to Sir Richard. He said one other thing as well. What was that? He said, those who live by the sword. Do you know to whom he was referring? Sir Richard, I thought. Those who live by the sword, that's all? Yes. Thank you. Please stay where you are. When was your husband arrested, Mrs. Fowkes? Sorry, sorry, what did you say? I said, when was your husband arrested? The day after the phone call. What was the date? It would be last um, May or, or, uh, or June. It was April. Your memory for dates doesn't seem awfully reliable, does it? And now, as to this mysterious friend who was to give your husband a loan, what was his name? Oh, my, I'm afraid I didn't know him. It, uh, it was someone my husband met in the army. Uh, has a business, I believe. I see. Did your husband ever discuss Sir Richard Cresswell with you? Sometimes. What were his feelings towards him? He felt Sir Richard had stopped our daughter from getting a place at the school. He just didn't believe Sir Richard's reasons for it. What reasons? Apparently, Sir Richard thought the school wouldn't suit Eloise because her intelligence wasn't up to that of the epileptic children. Oh, what were your feelings about that? Oh, I never thought her intelligence was all that important. A lot of other things she could do with before that. I see. Your husband is a man of strong convictions, is he not? Yes. You said before that he believes God's will is being worked out. What do you think he means by that? He is convinced that in the end, good will win over evil and the weak will inherit the earth over the strong. Your husband holds some extremely left-wing views on wealth and privilege, does he not? Oh, yes. He's, he's changed a lot in the last few years. I'm sorry to ask this, Mrs. Fouts, but I must. Would it be true to say that as a result of your heart condition, Shocks are dangerous for you? Yes. This whole trial, for instance? Yes. Well, then I suggest to you that your husband invented the story of a generous friend in order to spare you the anxiety of knowing the source of his sudden funds. No, he wouldn't do that. Did he ever tell you how he had invested the trust's money? After his arrest. Did he also neglect to tell you that he had obtained an additional £5,000 from Lady Cresswell? There are a lot of things he no longer confides in me. What sort of things? The activities we can't share now because... Uh, I don't blame him for finding her company more refreshing than mine. It's just that... that he... he what? He thinks I don't realise how we've drifted apart, but he's mistaken. It's funny, really. I mean, in the end, our marriage is just like theirs. Thank you. No further questions. 